and, sure. and we're going a bit deep here in in a deep end here but that is yes. that's the truth of it you know like as a lot of dads push their ch- children to become something that that pressure just weighs so much on them that they cannot now perform at the highest level because they're always looking over their shoulder what's their dad thinking what's their dad going to say mm-hmm. in the car on the way back home you know like he's going to shout at me he's going to say this if i make a mistake he's going to do and and that's the fear then that not going to let them excel in their career you know yeah with that being said uh you know I dove a little bit into your to your history. I see your dad was a big footballer, so that's why you made the move to England. Did 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 you get a lot of inspiration from him? How did you develop the love for the game? How did you get into football? So honestly, like my dad is my my biggest role model. He's someone that I look up to. Um, not just not just for for what he accomplished, not just for the Champions League that he played and all and all of these amazing things, the double that he won in in Holland, but more of the man that he is. You know, I think, you know, like you'll see a true man when he goes through trials and tribulations and goes through things and and, and stuff like that. Like when things are going amazing, like it's easy to smile. It's easy to to, to, to be happy. But when things aren't and and I I saw my dad go through so many, um, gone through life. You know, and the seed, how he handled life and how he handled certain things and what he did was vital in my upbringing was vital in my of of why I actually am still playing right now. I think you know he was someone that experienced everything that I was going through. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I I was living with someone that had gone through everything that I'm going through. So so mm-hmm. it was like I remember going through life like I only wanted to play football from young. All I can remember, I started playing for Manchester United when I was six years old. You know, wow. so football was my life. I remember, you know, my dad says it all the time, like how how um, he asked it. So it got to around 12 years old and my dad asked me, listen, Kenji, do you want to be a professional footballer? And I said, yeah, man, I, of course I want to be. He said, do you want to do everything in your power to become a professional footballer? And I said, yeah, what's life without football? Like, there's no life without football. And he said, okay, from now on, I'm going to treat you like a professional wow. footballer. And... That wasn't always easy. And there was times, yeah. you know, when, when I wasn't playing, when I was on the bench and I was thinking, I was crying in the car and I was like, this guy and that guy's upset. And he just let me cry. He just let me get it out. He let me let it out. He let me go. And he said, well, Kenji, you chose this. I didn't choose it for you. Mm-hmm. The coach didn't choose for you to be a footballer or not. The guys didn't. You chose it. Yeah. So I was like, wow, like... The intention that he had for me to be able... Because I can see when players have... It's been put on them rather than for them to actually play, you know? And and we're going a bit deep here, in in a deep end here. But that's the truth of it, you know? Like, a lot of dads push their children to become something. that, That pressure just weighs so much on them that they cannot now perform at the highest level because they're always looking over their shoulder. What's their dad thinking? What's their dad going to say in the mm-hmm. car on the way back home? You know, like he's going to shout at me. He's going to say this. If I make a mistake, he's going to do... And and that's the fear then that not going to let them excel in their career, you know? So so my dad was just honestly amazing with me growing up and and, and helping me um, to, to, to really, um, how do you say, cultivate my talent in the best way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that, man. What do you think were, were like some of the biggest tests that, you know, he, he voluntarily put you through to see if you actually wanted to be a footballer? Because like you said, you know, it's very easy to, to say you want to be a footballer, but to do those actions and consistently day after day at the highest level and maintain that standard is not easy. Exactly that. And, and I think, you know, it comes to, you know, when you're a young, when you're a young man, you're around 16, you know, you're getting exposed to things, you're getting exposed to the world. You know, yep. and and yep. and now you've got to make decisions because you've got a game the next day. So now it comes exactly. to Saturday. All your friends are going to this party. All your friends are going to this place, and all your friends are do- staying up late playing plays. All your friends are doing certain things that you want to be involved in because you don't want to be left out. And then my dad says, "Well, Kenji, do you want to be a professional footballer or not?" Yeah. Well, yeah. you know that you have to be home by nine. Yeah. You know, you have to do, you know, and it's just like, and, and I never asked him, 
like, can I go to this day? Can I go to that? I always said, I want to be a professional footballer. And I always felt I didn't want to also let him down, but I didn't want to let myself down. 100%. I didn't want to yeah. look back at myself and be like, I didn't give everything to this. Yeah. Because, yeah. Th- because to be honest with you, like growing up, like there was no other option. I was being a professional footballer. There's no other option. Like that was it. Like mm-hmm. there was no way. Mm-hmm. There was not like a plan B or a plan C or if this doesn't work out. I was like, I am becoming a professional footballer, whether people like it or not. That is what I'm doing. Everything in my power to become that. So nothing was wow. going to stop me from achieving that. And I think, you know, it got, it got to a point where these things happened, you know, like where it's like, well, there's a party, my best friend's party on Saturday. What, what do I do now? And honestly, mm-hmm. and to be real with you, like it cost friendship. Yeah. It cost, it cost me, it cost my upbringing. You know, it cost me mm-hmm. missing out on things where, um, you know, family parties, it cost me these things. Mm-hmm. But, Mm-hmm. That is why I always say it's not for everybody. 100%. Hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click one of these two videos right here to stay up to date with the best football development channel here on YouTube. And most importantly, don't forget to drink your sparkling water. Deuces.